Hi, my name is Jenny Paul. I'm an actor, producer, director in New York City, and my most recent project is called That Reminds Me, the series. It's a sitcom that's sort of modern family meets arrested development, and it's at www.thatreminds-me-the-series.com. Hi, I'm Isabella Peralta. I'm a producer as well as a director and mostly as a director. I am currently running a theater festival right now. I'm also the production manager for Green Card, the new musical. And I'm also just started up a new film company, so you're gonna check that out later. <laughs> Hi, my name is Chelsea B. Lockie. I'm a director and an actor. My most recent project is The Cold Trap, or Studio 1945 Productions, of which I'm also a co-founder. You can find more information on the movie on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash coldtrapmovie. Hi, I'm Natalia Plaza. I'm an actor, comedian, writer, producer. You can check out my latest sketch that's going to come out soon called The Sofa Bed Whisperer. And I'm also acting in a film that's coming out soon called Before the Court. And if you want to see more of my stuff, you can just check me out at nataliaplaza.com. Hi, I'm Natalie Romero. I am a producer here in the city. Uh, I work under the Vladar Company, so we are just putting out so many fun, great feature documentaries. Um, so please be on the lookout for The Hurt Business, which will be in theaters this year. You can also go on Vimeo to go see C.T. Fletcher, My Magnificent Obsession, Believe with Kai Green, and also Jeremy Scott, um, The People's Designer. So go out there, check us out, check me out, um, and hopefully much more to come. Roundtable web series. I'm your host Victoria Ivy King. I'm a director, producer, and founder of Cine59. Talk to me about uh, opportunities. So clearly, we have there. There are not as many. There's sort of an increase that was. So there was a. I think Sundance, if I'm not mistaken, uh, had a survey and or a poll as to how many female directors there are in the industry, or how many female writers, whatnot. So there's an increase of female filmmakers going into the industry. But talk to me about um, why, why, is it, why does it feel as though we have limited opportunities? Why are there not so many female filmmakers, directors, writers? Talk to me about your thoughts on that. I personally think it's the way we were raised that a lot of women won't put themselves in kind of those places of opportunity. Um, I came from stage managing. The first, how I first got into film was our friend Ryan. <laughs> he, I did a stage, man, I stage managed a show for him and he wanted me to go on his film. And I'm like, I don't know anything about film. I can tell you that firsthand. So I don't know how much help I'll be. And I just remember falling in love with it so much. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do a good job on that film. I know I didn't. <laughs> but I know that with my work ethic from theater, I got the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. And I know if I didn't think ahead of time to be in that show, I wouldn't have gotten that film, you know? So I think it's that fear of not wanting to try, mm -hmm. of that insecurity of, well, I'm a woman, mm -hmm. and that's not my place. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, as I said before, I grew up with a lot of confidence, so it's like, I'm going to try everything that I can. I think a lot of women are thinking, I'm not gonna be good at that, I don't wanna do that. You know, oh, um, that's for people who look this way. Mm -hmm. You know, that's for, you know, that's for women who men like more. You know, mm -hmm. it's, I, I don't have that look. I don't have that, you know, sexuality or whatever oozing of, or I'm not a boss ass bitch yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you're mm -hmm. on your way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, if you don't try, then you don't get those opportunities. And coming from a minority standpoint too, you know, mm -hmm. like, I got into this argument with this person saying, well, they need to pick out more minority writers, and I agree, they do. Mm -hmm. But just because they're a minority doesn't mean you should pick them. Mm -hmm. You should pick them because they're working hard. Yes. Mm -hmm. You should pick them because they have a good script. Mm -hmm. You should pick them because they're just good. showing you what they can do. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's up to us as minorities, it's up to us as women to make the opportunities for ourselves. Mm -hmm. To, you know what, I went into film because I wanted to act in film, because I wanted to make scripts and I wanted to produce and direct myself in a show. Mm -hmm. And that's how I knew I would get the opportunity to do that because not many people look like me. Sure. You know, so as a minority, as a woman, you have to put yourself in that position. You have to make people notice you. Yeah. yeah. I love the confidence that you have. It wasn't really 
unfortunately it wasn't really until 2015 that I really started to think about this but representation mm-hmm. is so important I'm multiracial so mm-hmm. I'm literally all minorities I'm mm-hmm. Guyanese Dominican <laughs> British you know all yeah. of that but um I don't have any representation mm-hmm. for myself and I think that's so so sort of um amazing that you decided I'm going to re- I'm going to create my own representation mm-hmm. I my voice do- deserves to be heard there are mm-hmm. people out there that would watch this mm-hmm. and be like you are just mm-hmm. like me versus oh no no one yeah. would want to hear me speak or something mm-hmm. like that so I commend you on that I think I think representation is so important I mean I was so fortunate to grow up with my mother and not many people have the mother that I had yeah. or she would get me brown Barbie dolls she would never let me have white Barbie dolls she's, no. like, she's like you're gonna play That's with brown fantastic. Barbie dolls and yeah. I remember crying about it I'm like I want the white Barbie dolls no mm-hmm. and I was lucky to also have grown up with a fleet of women who had their own comedy shows I mean I watched 30 Rock religiously I watched um, Parks and Rec I watched these shows that I saw these women in charge. You know, I loved Judy Garland growing up, and she demanded respect. You know, Meryl Streep as well. Like, I think I just really love these women who women who were taking charge of themselves. Mm-hmm. And I think, as a minority, I kind of just thought maybe I don't look like them, but I'm a woman. Yeah. So I still feel some representation. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, like I love being Latin, but who cares about race? You know, we're all human beings and I have a story. Mm -hmm. And I think if you view representation like that, you're going to go so much farther than being like, they don't have the half Ecuadorian, half Puerto Rican, half, Mm -hmm. you know, lizard. (laughs) (laughs) But they do have someone that vaguely looks like me and Mm -hmm. has a story. I vaguely look like that, but I have a story. Yeah. Let me, I'm going to do it. Yeah, Yeah. I think any kind of ethnic diversity is important because Mm -hmm. I think if you only stick to one race, you're kind of erasing everyone else, you know? Especially if it's something that's supposed to take place in sort of the real world. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, until I was 10, I really thought I was eventually gonna grow blonde hair. Mm -hmm. Because all I saw on TV were blonde women. And I was like, well, my blonde hair will come in soon. (laughs) I really thought I was gonna be a blonde, naturally. Mm -hmm. It sounds crazy, but, Mm -hmm. um, so I think that representation is so important. I mean. When I started, uh, really, like, you, I just grew up seeing, like, Alicia Silverstone, mm-hmm. right? And then, uh, I don't know, later Reese Witherspoon. Um, I don't know, who are these? <coughs> Jennifer Aniston. Yeah, yeah, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, I, yeah, like, when later on, when mm-hmm. I started seeing different fa- female leads, I thought, yeah, like, wow, that's so refreshing. I feel yeah. different, you know? Mm-hmm. I see something that does yeah. look like me or feels yeah. more like me, it feels better. It feels Or the same story natural. as you. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm-hmm. So then I realized, wow, I, uh, this whole time I was kind of seeing myself through the filter of what I was seeing on TV, mm-hmm. which is not exactly who I am, but mm-hmm. still a little different. So I really appreciate diversity. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. quite interesting because in the 90s, we had a lot more of if you want to call it ethnic, I really don't like the, the word ethnic, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's like, who is ethnic? We're yeah. all ethnic. Exactly. <laughs> and diverse doesn't ethnic. just mean different skin color. Yeah. You, you could be the same skin color, still be diverse. Yeah. But in the 90s, you had like Keenan and Kel, the cast yeah. we yeah. show, which I should really Family be bringing up. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, Tania, I think it's Tania, yeah. that's the name of the show. But you had all Taina? these... Yeah, there you go. I love Taina. Love Taina. You had all of these sort of ethnic, if you will, showrunners um, and and not just not just the black or the, or the Hispanic. You had you had shows for Asians and Indians. Mm-hmm. Everyone, everyone. Yeah. But in the nineties, it was I saw a mixture of everyone, every single mm-hmm. race there is. And then that sort of went away. Mm-hmm. It's definitely back now, though. It is. It's definitely it's back. Really back, back in like a newer yeah. form yeah. too. Yeah, it's, it's definitely back in, in a way that it's not. This is a black show. <laughs> yeah. it's not like, exactly. You know, this is just yeah. a show that's yeah. like real. Like thank yeah. God. But just mm-hmm. going back to what you're saying about are we coming into this age where there's more filmmakers and, mm-hmm. and how does that happen? I think it, unfortunately people you you go in well not unfortunately, you're gonna you wanna mm-hmm. go into a company, you wanna go into a project where you feel comfortable with people mm-hmm. that you are going to work with. With women, sometimes what happens is that I feel comfortable working working with a woman. Mm -hmm. Well, woman, because a woman Mm -hmm. is going to understand what I'm going through. So you find yourself in that position. I think now, since we have this taking taking ourselves out of the whole industry, 
this world discussion, at mm -hmm. least in, in the U.S., mm -hmm. I'd say nationally, of, of what is a, a feminist or, or what is what a woman is capable of being. Now we're like, okay, well, we don't need to just be with women, and we can and and, and yeah. the people that are hiring are thinking the same thing. Well, mm -hmm. let's just hire whoever's good. Mm -hmm. Let's not hire a man because a man's probably not going to mm -hmm. get pregnant, although <laughs> he's yeah. part of that, whatever, mm -hmm. um, and he's not going to have to take off and or mm -hmm. he's not going to be so or he's not going to be as emotional as a, as a woman where you're mm -hmm. finding yourself in, in a place where you can just represent yourself as who you are and mm -hmm. embrace that and yeah. be like oh and and I'm not removing that from my resume it's yes my yeah. last name is a Latin last name because yeah. I am Latin and mm -hmm. I'm going to yeah. be that mm -hmm. um, you don't have to be anybody else someone actually recommended that I change my last name to something whiter no Oh and I, I, I just thought hey, oh that was an actual God. suggestion. What's your like last name ago? It's not even that. It's like it's Plaza P L A Z A, <laughs> but it's actually like it's yeah. like Spanish. Yeah. yeah. So it's Plaza. like it's kind of people just know it as like a parking lot. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not even like very Latin. It's not like white. Yeah. It's kind of like a nothing word. Yeah. But people are like, you should change it to something whiter. And I was like, Plaza is kind of. But I just thought in general that was a weird suggestion. 